Keeping up with the new series I announced in my last video, today it is time for a new comparison. According to my experience, I have already determined in the first video of this series that KLM's short haul product was better than what Air France offered. In today's video and second chapter of this comparison series, we will come to a conclusion on which of the two airlines has the best long haul economy class product. So as to put this comparison in context, I flew both airlines on their routes to or from Buenos Aires. I flew Air France 777-200 to kick off my journey on a 13-hour flight to Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. After two weeks in Europe, I flew KLM's 777-300ER on my way back home to Buenos Aires. Let's now get the comparison started. As usual, let's start by this hard product. Like Roman Air France at the first glimpse was really good, and KLM's was even better. Something to highlight is that even with your seat or the seat ahead reclined, legroom was still good on both airlines. Onto the features of the seats, on the one hand, Air France seat had a coat hook below the in-flight entertainment screen that came with a USB port and headphone jack, as well as an adjustable tray table, a cup holder, a universal power outlet and some seat pockets to organize your personal stuff. Additionally, the seat also featured an adjustable headrest. On the other hand, KLM's seat also featured an in-flight entertainment screen with a headphone jack and USB port below, as well as a coat hook on the side of the seat. Moreover, it had some storage space for magazines behind the adjustable tray table and a seat pocket too. The universal power outlet in this case was located below the seat and the headrest was not only adjustable in neck size, but also in height. However, my seat in KLM had no window, even though we had paid for it as a window seat. When boarding, the seats in both airlines had a pillow and a blanket, and Air France also offered headphones and an eye mask. Instead, KLM's crew passed by distributing headphones, but as I already had mine, they refused to give me. In general terms, both seats were really good, but I actually found KLM's seat to be better. Despite not having a window, it features some more legroom and I didn't find it as hard as it happened with the Air France seat. Let's now start comparing the service each of the airlines offered. After takeoff, both airlines started serving quite quickly. Air France handed out a refreshing towel and a menu, which is something that I really liked, while KLM handed out a refreshing towel and a bottle of water. After this, Air France also served some snacks together with a drink of your choice. And then, the main meal came. Both airlines offered two options for the main dish. Air France, as it said in the menu, offered basically chicken or pasta. KLM, instead, offered pasta or meatballs. I went in both cases for the pasta option. They were both decent and well accompanied. During the night, both airlines also gave a mid-flight snack. Air France gave a little ice cream which actually scored some good points for this comparison because I really liked it, while KLM gave a little box with some snacks and water. The two airlines also served breakfast before landing. Air France served some pancakes with blueberry sauce as a main, which were quite okay, though I don't usually like to have breakfast on airplanes. Instead, KLM served something that looked like an omelette. This time, I was actually looking forward for breakfast, and when I saw it, it seemed something really good. However, it actually tasted horrible and it wasn't an omelette. I don't know what it actually was. In my opinion, even though I have to say that both soft products were actually surprising, I would say that Air France was slightly better. In terms of entertainment now, of course both aircraft were equipped with in-flight entertainment systems. As I always say, I don't usually use it for more than listening to some music and looking at the flight map. 
However, I decided to search both of the in-flight entertainment systems and they both had good selection of movies, music albums and documentaries. And both screens were also very responsive. I'm also not sure whether any of the planes was equipped with in-flight Wi-Fi. Moreover, of course, each of the airlines had its own magazines and I was supposed to have a window seat in both flights, which as I usually say, is a great form of entertainment. However, as I narrated in the video that I'm linking above, my seat had actually no window. This of course doesn't benefit KLM in this comparison. I can't really say which of the two airlines had a better in-flight entertainment system, but this episode of the 20 euro window seat without window in KLM's flight wasn't really fun. I can also include in this comparison the ground experience which was excellent with both airlines and the cabin crew which were really nice, though my KLM flight attendant was kind of bad humored. All in all, I have to say that both flights were great. However, if I had to pick one of the airlines after such a comparison, it would probably be Air France. Their hard product was decent, their soft product was surprising, and the all-in-all -all experience was really satisfying. That's all for today's comparison, hope you have enjoyed it, and see you in the next couple of days for the ultimate showdown between these two airlines, where I will determine which one of the two is the best, taking into account these two first videos. Thank you very much for watching until the end, subscribe if you don't want to miss what's coming soon, and on to the next one.